Oxalis tuberosa, Wikipedia article audio. Oxalis tuberosa is a perennial herbaceous plant that overwinters as underground stem tubers. These tubers are known as huca in Quechua, OCA in Spain and Cubio in other Spanish language countries, New Zealand yam and a number of other alternative names. The plant was brought into cultivation in the central and southern Andes for its tubers, which are used as a root vegetable. The plant is not known in the wild, but populations of wild oxalis species that bear smaller tubers are known from four areas of the central Andean region. OCA was introduced to Europe in 1830 as a competitor to the potato and to New Zealand as early as 1860. Cultural Significance Diversity Morphological Characters Local Cultivar Names Molecular Markers Nutrition Edibility Use Categories Nutrition 2 Cultivation Distribution Climate requirements Soil requirements Propagation Cropping factors Yields Limitations Agricultural potential Conservation efforts Alternative names in New Zealand, OCA has become a popular table vegetable and is simply called yam or New Zealand yam. It is now available in a range of colors, including yellow, orange, pink, apricot, and the traditional red. Grown primarily by Quechua and Aymara farmers, OCA has been a staple of rural Andean diets for centuries. Of all Andean root and tuber crops, OCA is currently second only to potato in area planted within the central Andean region. OCA is important to local food security because of its role in crop rotations and its high nutritional content. Andean farmers cultivate numerous varieties of OCA. OCA diversity may be described with respect to morphological characters local cultivar names, or molecular markers. OCA morphotypes are distinguished by foliar, floral, fruit, stem, and tuber characteristics, as described in the International Plant Genetic Resources Institute's document on OCA descriptors. The morphological diversity of OCA tubers, in particular, is astounding. Tubers range from 25 to 150 mm in length by 25 mm in width. Skin and flesh color may be white, cream, yellow, orange, pink, red, and slash or purple and distributed in range of patterns. OCA growing communities often name varieties based primarily on tuber morphology and secondarily on flavor. For example, common names may include Ushpa Negra or Puka Panti. Great inconsistency of nomenclature has been reported within and among communities. Numerous studies have additionally described OCA diversity through molecular approaches to study protein and genetic variation. Molecular markers, such as allozymes and intersimple sequence repeats, show OCA diversity to be low relative to other crops, probably because of its vegetative mode of propagation. While genetic differentiation corresponds well with folk classification, cluster analyses indicate that folk cultivars are not perfect clones, but rather genetically heterogeneous groupings. OCA is one of the highest vegetable sources of carbohydrate and energy. They are a good source of provitamin A, and also contain potassium, vitamin B6 and small amounts of fiber. 
yellow-orange colored varieties indicate the presence of carotenoids, whilst red skins and red specks in flesh indicate the presence of anthocyanins. OCA is cultivated primarily for its edible stem tuber, but the leaves and young shoots can be eaten as a green vegetable also. Mature stems can be used similarly to rhubarb. Andean communities have various methods to process and prepare tubers, and in Mexico OCA is eaten raw with salt, lemon, and hot pepper. The flavor is often slightly tangy, but there is a considerable degree of difference in flavors between varieties and some are not acidic at all. Texture ranges from crunchy when raw or undercooked, to starchy or mealy when fully cooked. OCA is fairly high in oxalates, concentrated in the skin, and the bioavailability of oxalate appears to be similar to spinach. Significant variation in oxalate concentration exists among varieties, and this variation distinguishes two OCA use categories recognized by Andean farmers. One use category, sour OCA, contains cultivars with high levels of oxalic acid. Farmers process these tubers to form a usable storage product, called kea in Quechua. To prepare kea, tubers are first soaked in water for approximately one month. Then they are left outside during hot, sunny days and cold, freezing nights until they become completely dehydrated. This process is similar to the preparation of chinua from bitter potatoes. Cultivars in this use category are referred to in Quechua as kea or piasqua, and in Aymara as lucai. The other use category, sweet OCA, contains cultivars with lower levels of oxalic acid. The traditional Andean preparation methods for this use category are also geared towards reducing the oxalate level of the harvested vegetable, but without dehydration. This is done by exposure to sunlight, which decreases the organic acid content and thereby increases the sweet taste of the OCA. Once exposed to sunlight, OCA can be boiled, baked or fried. In the Andes it is used in stews and soups, served like potatoes, or can be served as a sweet. Cultivars in this category are referred to in Quechua as Wakeyu, Miskai and in Aymara as Qini. Sour OCA and sweet OCA form distinct genetic clusters based on AFLP data. This suggests the possibility of distinct evolutionary histories for each use category. The table to the right displays the nutritional content for fresh and dried OCA. OCA is a valuable source of vitamin C, potassium, and iron. It also provides some protein, with valine and tryptophan its limiting amino acids. Cultivars vary greatly in nutritional content so these measures should be taken only as approximates. It also ranks high from the nutritional point of view. OCA is one of the important staple crops of the Andean highlands, due to its easy propagation, and tolerance for poor soil, high altitude, and harsh climates. OCA is planted in the Andean region from Venezuela to Argentina from 2,800 to 4,100 meters above sea level. Its highest abundance and greatest diversity are in central Peru and northern Bolivia, the probable area of its domestication. OCA needs a long growing season, and is day length dependent, forming tubers when the day length shortens in autumn. In addition, OCA requires climates with average temperatures of approximately 10 to 12 degrees Celsius and average precipitation of 700 to 885 mm per year. OCA requires short days in order to form tubers. Outside the tropics, it will not begin to form tubers until approximately the autumn equinox. 
If frosts occur too soon after the autumn equinox, the plant will die before tubers are produced. OCA grows with very low production inputs, generally on plots of marginal soil quality, and tolerates acidities between about pH 5.3 and 7.8. In traditional Andean cropping systems, it is often planted after potato and therefore benefits from persisting nutrients applied to, or left over from, the potato crop. OCA is usually propagated vegetatively by planting whole tubers. Propagation by seed is possible but is rarely used in practice. Sexual propagation is complicated by several factors. First, like many other species in the genus Oxalis, OCA flowers exhibit Tristilaus heterostyli and are consequently subject to auto-incompatibility. Furthermore, on the rare occasion that OCA plants do produce fruit, their loculicidal capsules do his spontaneously, making it difficult to harvest seed. OCA flowers are pollinated by insects. Data regarding the frequency of volunteer hybrids and farmers' subsequent incorporation of them has not yet been published. OCA tuber seeds are planted in the Andes in August or September and harvested from April to June. The first flowers bloom around three to four months after planting, and the tubers also begin to form then. Between planting and harvesting, the OCA crop requires little tending, except for a couple of weedings and hillings. OCA is a component of traditional crop rotations and is usually planted in a field directly after the potato harvest. A common sequence in this rotation system may be one year of potato, one year of OCA, one year of oats or faba beans, and two to four years fallow. Within this system, Qualpa is a Quechua term that signifies soil previously cultivated and prepared for planting of a new crop. The cultural practice is similar to potatoes. Planting is done in rows or hills 8100 cm apart, with plants spaced 4060 cm apart in the rows. Monoculture predominates, but interplanting with several other tuber species, including Mashua and Alyuko, in one field is common in Andean production. Often this intercopum consists of several different varieties of each species. Such mixed fields may later be sorted into tuber types during harvest or before cooking. Harmine found in root secretions of Oxalis tuberosa has been found to have insecticidal properties. Yields vary with the cultural method. Annals from Andean countries report about 7 to 10 tons per hectare for Oxalis tuberosa production. But with adequate inputs and virus-free propagation material, OCA production can range from 35 to 55 tons per hectare. Pests and diseases limit the production of OCA. Crops in the Andes are often infected with viruses, causing chronic yield depression. Adequate techniques to remove viruses have to be applied before the varieties can be used outside the Andean region. Cultivation is also constrained by the Andean potato weevil, Ulyuko weevil, and OCA weevil the identification of which remains uncertain. These weevils often destroy entire crops. Further notable pests are nematodes. As already mentioned, both day-length restrictions and the presence of oxalates can also be considered limiting factors. Scientists work with specific breeding, selection, and virus cleaning programs on these purposes. Potential distribution to other suitable ecogeographical zones of, for example, Asia and Africa may be possible. The cultivation and use of a fleshy pink variety of Oxalis tuberosa in New Zealand already indicates a wider utilization and agricultural interest than has been previously recognized. 
A number of ongoing ex situ and in situ conservation projects currently focus on the preservation of Oxalis tuberosa diversity. The International Potato Center in Peru has several hundred accessions of OCA collected from regions in Bolivia, Argentina, and Peru to help ensure and maintain diversity. Currently, there are further efforts to collect accession of OCA in regions where habitat destruction and pests are threatening diversity of wild OCA accessions.